In this video, I will discuss the Garage Designer. After starting a project, you would select Plus Plan. From there, click the image that looks like a garage for Garage Designer. Selecting that will open our template 24 by 24 garage working drawing. It's a complete working drawing. All it requires is you to manipulate it to suit your needs. First thing you do is you set the width and depth. You can adjust those from 12 to 40 feet wide to 12 to 100 feet deep. I'll do 24 by 30. You can do it to the inch as well. It's just for single family dwellings. And next would be your type of foundation that you want. I'll flip over to the foundation plan. You can see all the working drawing notes on there. And you can either do poured concrete, concrete block, ICF. And as you can see, as I switch items when I'm manipulating it over here, you'll see images on this side change and an engineered slab. And you can pick how you want that to be done. I'm going to leave it with poured concrete. You can change the thickness, the depth, the type of um, earth that it's being put on, and the strength of concrete if you know what it's going to be. Next is the wall tab. So I'm going to click walls. You can either do wood frame or ICF as long as the ICF is picked for the foundation. Right now I don't have it. That's why this little image is coming up here saying I don't have it picked. Um, we have 2x4s at 12, 16, and 24, and same with 2x6s. Wall sheathing, all different types, and stud heights. So if I go to a front elevation, you'll see that it's 8 foot 9 and 8. That includes the 8 inch plus the studs and the four plates on top with the pre cut. I could change that to 10 foot, and you can see how it goes up. So it's gone 10 plus the 4 uh, plus the 8 inch. Um, that the foundation sticking up plus the four and a half inches equals 11 foot. So you can adjust the height of your top plate depending on where you want it to be and how high you want your wall. So, and you can do it to the inch and have fractions if you wish. You can change the outside cladding from horizontal to vertical and changing the gable ends separately if you want them. They could be, you know, shake and so, so forth. So you can see how that adjusts. Um, you could do horizontal or vertical with a stone skirt. And you can pick which side you want to be, have the stone on them, and how high you want the stone to be. Um, interior finishes. And these are in um, drywall and plywood and insulation are yes or no is just strictly for the material list because you're going to have a full material list of every single thing that you're going to require for this garage when you're done. Um, corner boards you can put in. I'll pick uh, maybe a five inch corner board so you can see the corner boards one on and a freeze board up in the top across there. Uh, this wall flip is if the um, doors on the eaves side. Anyways, we'll talk about that one another in, in separate videos. Next is roof. I'm going to select roof and you can either have a gable roof, which you can see right here, or a hip roof, which comes down, right? And if I look at it from a left side, you can see it coming up across the ridge and back down. If I pick gable, it's a gable on either end. We have different roof pitches. You can go from 412 all the way to 1212 with half pitches to select whichever one you want. Sorry, it's meant to be on front. And you can see how it changes in the elevation. So again, you're just manipulating this drawing to suit whatever you want. So I've got an 812 there. You can change the heel height, move it up. That gives you more, maybe you're going to insulate it. So you can adjust all of that in there. The eave overhang, you can see 1 foot 10 back to 12 inches. Uh, the gable and so we'll change to a left you can see it's one foot four I could change that to 24 or 20 and you can see it's gone to one foot eight you can change uh, materials to metal roofing to cedar shakes which look the same but it's noted differently 
uh, all the different types of sheathing that you might want to have on the wall. Gable end can either be a wall or a truss, and the lookouts can either be 2x4 or 2x6. This roof return, if I go to a front, if I click on here, add roof return, it's these little, they call them roof returns. This one comes out, you can say how long you want it to be, right here. We go up to 36 inches. You can have that as a hip, which it returns back in, or perhaps you want it to go all the way across. And you'd see that more if I go into my walls and change my end cladding to maybe vertical. You can actually see now there's a little shingle line on there. So, um, and that's it for the walls. Uh, next, uh, sorry, that was roof, and that was the end of roof. Um, so the last one is openings. I'm going to select openings. And I'm going to, I'm in the front, and you can work in any plan that you want or in elevation when you're doing this. So in the front, I'm going to add an opening, and I'm going to put a garage door in. So it puts the garage door in over on the side. And if you want it to be centered, you select centered, moves it over the center. Maybe you want to change the width of it to 16 feet, it puts it in. I'll go back to uh, 9 feet, go to plan, and you can see that for a nine foot wide door in this particular location, um, climatic location, it's put in two two by sixes. Now that all depends on where you're located. So if you're way up north in, in Ontario or um, up in Quebec, you know, that might be two by eight, but it's all based on, on loading conditions of snow. So if I change that back to the 16 foot door, you can see it's gone to two two by 12s. So the program automatically does everything for you. You don't need to know anything about structure. You just need to know what it's going to look like, and that's it. So you can adjust those. You can adjust the height. So let's go back onto the front here, and we've got lots of room here to make that higher door. So maybe you want your 8-foot high door. So you put it 8-foot, and up it goes. Um, you can override the uh, lintels if you want. Right now it's showing you what all the... Um, the bending and shear and everything like that, all the structural is for it. But maybe you've got um, it saying two two by twelve, but maybe you want to put in three two by eights if, because you've got lots of them around. You can go in here and adjust it if you like. So um, I'll switch over to the left side. I'm going to put in um, a garage door in there as well. If I go to plan, you can see that it's put in two, uh, sorry, three two by twelves with double jacks because there's a lot more load on the eave side because that's where the roof is sitting. But if I increase that, say to 12, you can see it's automatically going to LVL. So it'll either pick regular lumber up to three plies if it can. And then if it can't, then it'll go to LVLs. And then if it can't, it'll put a steel beam in. And if I go back to walls here, it's gone two by six. Automatically above nine foot ten, it automatically goes to two by sixes. It already knows that two by fours are only good for that height. So back in our openings here, maybe on the right hand side, maybe I'll put in a door. So I'll put the man door down in here. And it's you know, and then so instead of centering that, maybe I want to move it from the edge, from the left corner. Let's move it six feet up. So now it, that's six feet from the corner to the edge. So if I was to go to my foundation plan, you can see there it is there. Six, the rough opening is three foot four, and all those notes are on there. So the rear, I could put one in as well. So now I'm going to go back to roof. See, stairs is not enabled because it only works with attic trusses. So I'm going to go back to roof, and I'm going to select attic trusses. And now we have an extra plan called loft. So if I undo that, you can see we only have foundation and main floor plan. If I select attic trusses, now we have a loft plan. And you can see now we have attic trusses, and they're usually about half of the width. So this would be 12 or 13 feet in here. So, And you can adjust that. You can come down here and you can change it to make it more. We know that likely can't be any more than that. And you can go actually into... Um, your building section you can actually see it in here ultimately it'll be up to the truss manufacturer um, depending on your load and whatever they'll tell you what the maximum size is but you can tell them what you're looking for and then it'll go from there sort of thing so uh, 
Um, but to have stairs, you must have um, attic trusses because you need to be able to get up in there. So I'm going to go to the main floor plan and I'm going to add stairs now. So there's an additional cost of twenty dollars for that. I'm going to click it, and you can see it automatically put all the engineering in and everything, all the loads, the girder that's landing on this, updated this. It went from a eleven and seven eighths to a fourteen inch because it knows there's a girder truss sitting on there. So all of that engineering is being done for you automatically. Now you can switch the uh, the door around. I can put it on this side, but it'll say, well, it's in the middle of a door, so you can't do that. Um, and down here, same thing, there's a door down on this one here. So I'll just leave it up in the top corner in here. And once I added the stair, it adds a, a stair section. So now you've come up to a landing and up, and then it's coming into here. So and if I go to the foundation plan, it now says that there needs to be a pier right here, and that's to support the post that is there for the stair landing. So that's about it really for the... Um, the garage again this is the full working drawing you could click on each one of these plans and you'll actually see them all after I prepare this wall sections there all the details will come up and so forth so once you're finished you give it a description because maybe you're doing one or two or more um, a PO number if that's what you need for your business and you hit save and return to project once back to your project, here it is up here. I didn't actually give it a description. I could have, but it's garage plan with loft. And now we have these action buttons, print preview, print estimate, purchase, copy, and delete. So the first one I'm going to click on is print preview so that we can see what the finished drawings look like, but it says not for permit on it. And that would be used to give to the building department to check to make sure that you're allowed to do this before purchasing it, give it to some builders, give it to a supplier to get pricing, all of that type of stuff would be done with this button right here. So I'm gonna select that, and in Chrome, it opens up down in the bottom left-hand corner. So I'm gonna select that, and there it is. So it says not for permit on here. It's got your logo, your name and number, and nothing else on there for seals or anything like that. So when you go to purchase it, it removes the not for permit, puts the engineer seal on and so forth. So you can see the front, we've got our stone, we've got our door, it's in Bracebridge for the loading. All the stuff's on here, we've got our stair on here, all the different loads, loft plan, uh, a roof plan, oopsie, elevation, that's the front, that's the rear, that's the left, right. We've got a building section through that, we've got another building section through the uh, um, staircase, then we got wall sections, details on the doors, on the roof, general notes, quite a few of them, and then all the lentils that are required. And each one of these, when you purchase it, this one here has the point load on it, will come with an engineer seal here when you're finished with it. So that's basically all there is to, and then this is the roof uh, return section, so there's a little bit of a, uh, a detail on that. So that's it for there. I will shut this down. Next is our print estimate. I'm going to select print estimate. Again, it will open up in the corner here in Chrome. Select it, and here's the full material quantity takeoff. So we've got all the stuff for the foundation, concrete, anchor bolts, wire mesh that you're going to need for anything in the slab. Next is all the frame walls, two by six studs at 12 or at 16 inch centers. We've got cripple studs for above openings and so forth. Then we've got all the wall sheathing, nails and so staples and everything, cladding. We got the caps and so forth for the cultured stone. Now we only have cultured stone on this. It's not full thick with stone on it at this time. Uh, cladding, we've got jam mold, freeze boards, caulking, nails, all the lintels and fasteners, openers, uh, accessories, bundles, spray foam. Um, we've got uh, trusses, all what you're going to need. You need 14 standards and two dropped and one stair girder. And again, that would be given to you by the uh, trust company for the exact ones that you need. All your lookouts, all your roof framing and sub fascia boards, anything to do with the loft here and the roof framing and fascia board uh, and the roof return that's coming across the face of that. So every single piece of material that is needed to 
uh, build this garage is in this material estimate. I'll shut this down. And then the last one, well, I could copy it and duplicate it and then modify it. Maybe I don't want a loft. I want to show it to my client in two different ones, uh, one without, one with not. So I won't duplicate it. But say you're happy with it. The town says you're good to go. You're happy with the price. Uh, you've got all the supplier uh, uh, pricing and so forth. Now you want to purchase it. So the last thing would be you have to make sure all this information is filled in first. And if it is, then you hit purchase. It says, do you want to buy this for $20 premium for $215? Because a standard garage is $195 plus the Sierra case is $2215. I'm going to click purchase. And now it moves from the in progress section of your project down to the completed area. And here it is here. So garage plan with loft. And the action button now is download PDF. So I'll select that and it'll open up. And it has removed the not for permit and put the engineer seal. And there's an engineer technologist as well signing off on these with BCINs in Ontario. Um, and that's every page is exactly the same as the other one. It's just got the not for permit removed from it. And I will shut that off. It brings me back to here. And I could start another one if I wish um, and go from there. And that's how the garage designer works.